Hello and welcome to IDA Surat. I am Imran Chutani and today we will be doing a class on waterproofing where we will be taking in-depth session on to the myths of waterproofing, what is actually waterproofing, an introduction to that and what is the importance of waterproofing for our structures, for our building areas, what are the treatment of waterproofing options that we have. So before knowing all about waterproofing, let's know something about concreting because that will be the surface that we will be waterproofing on and that is the surface with which our most of the structure is made. So concrete is a mixture of cement, sand and aggregates which is mixed with water and placed onto surfaces to make a rigid surface of concrete. Concrete is sometimes used with steel and sometimes some places it is used without steel. So steel rods are sometimes placed and sometimes not placed. So all there are different types of concrete and we will not go much in deep about concreting but then let's jump on to the part of waterproofing now. So first let's understand is waterproofing actually required or is it necessary right. So what, when we have our concrete in place will it not be waterproof because concrete itself is impermeable to water and there will not be any sort of water which will uh, be let in by the concrete because concrete is very, very rigid a material and if there are no uh, you know uh, pass or honeycombs that can carry water inside your structure there will not be any seepages for waterproofing. So then what, why do we require waterproofing because concrete has a rule that says that concrete either it has cracks right now or it will have cracks in future. So any cracks that will appear onto concrete now or in future if there are any honeycombs which are voids in concrete bad concreting when it is done or if there is any loophole there are voids in concrete which carry water inside that can be seen in the initial phases but then later also there will be cracks into concrete always which will let water inside your concrete everybody likes rain but nobody likes water coming inside their structure right so you, we all like the bathroom showers and the best of the showers but we don't want that water to come inside our room so we understand that waterproofing is necessary and everybody should get their structures wet structures or all those areas where water splashes or water presence will be there to be waterproof for the protection of your concrete and well-being of your structure inside. So there are two type of waterproofing leakage that can happen. One that is inside your concrete which is not visible for you to see and it is damaging your concrete inside because water when it starts penetrating inside your concrete it can damage your concrete, your cement particles and your steel also. So corrosion of your steel also happens. So there are two type of waterproofing leakages one is what one which you cannot see which is inside your concrete but then damaging your concrete and the second is what you can see right and what you can see feel and you can analyze that yes there is some problems here waterproofing leakages can happen uh, at a lot of places which can be your masonry walls your uh, concrete cold joints, your honeycombs into your concrete, your uh, old to new structures, your expansion joints into concrete, your uh, external masonry cracks and there are a lot of ways where you can see water seepages and water leakages happening. So is waterproofing essential? Is it important? Does it have any significance into your concrete structures? Yes, it does, right? Because impermeability of water inside your concrete structure can damage, make a lot of damage to your concrete. It can start corrosion of your steel because steel has, steel provides flexibility to your structure. And if your steel is corroded, gone and weakened, your structure will lose its flexibility because we all know only rigidity into structure will not give a good life for your structure so any flexible any jerk that will happen to your structure your structure piece can come down 
Water has capacity to rotten all your wooden or perishable items which are degradable. You can also see some uh, paint peeling off onto the wall, damp rising on the wall and there could be also electronic hazards. Electronic hazards as in water when it uh, reaches any electrical point you can have those earthings or sh short circuit problems. And finally, uh, it can swell your concrete itself and you, uh, you will have a weak structure which, has, uh, which is exposed to steel and the corrosion and the deterioration of your concrete will go far far ahead. So yes, after knowing this, yes, we understand that yes, waterproofing is an important aspect of your structure and you definitely definitely need good waterproofing treatment to be done onto your concrete structures and lastly for a healthier environment inside your living space you need good waterproofing because there will be a lot of foul smell and which leads to a lot of bacteria and fungal inside your living space so it is better and we do understand we can conclude by saying this yes waterproofing is definitely an essential part of your structure because there will be a lot of problems that you can face there will be a lot of uh, uncomfortness that you will have into your structure if you have wrongly treated or avoided good aspect of waterproofing so what all are the areas that we need to waterproof into our structure so right starting from the base we need our raft before filling of the raft we want waterproofing to be done so that if there is any uplift or uh, negative water pressure from the floor ground there will not be any water which is coming inside your concrete your uh, wall the dead wall that we create outside on the boundaries of our structure so we need also to waterproof those walls because from those walls you don't want water seeping in into your uh, concrete into your structure you also if there is a basement that you have into your structure we also want those basement walls to be treated well with waterproofing right so that any uh, rain water or uh, you know the when the water table rises you don't want water to seep in into your structure apart from that all the wet areas that we have we have bathrooms we have balconies and uh, we will have uh, the water tanks we we have underground water tanks we will have overground water tanks and then we will have uh, terraces uh, swimming pools we have recreation things like gardens we have fountains so all these weight areas will need a good choice of waterproofing and choice of waterproofing will also differ according to what kind of structure we are waterproofing so which we will take down into our presentation so before we start waterproofing let me clarify you a few things wherein you should know about before we are doing waterproofing because waterproofing is not just coating of some waterproofing material which will protect your concrete from waterproof your waterproofing should be capable enough strong enough the base should be strong enough so that the overlay will be good so your base should not have some negative things which we will discuss right now first and foremost thing is honeycomb your concrete should not have any voids which are called honeycombs which will easily pe let penetration of water inside your concrete should not have any cracks initial cracks do happen due to uh, wrong mixing ratio wrong water mixing ratio uh, sometimes bleeding and you can have initial cracks also through some structural movement initially that has happened or settlement of your structure so you should not have that third thing is you should not have any cold joint cold joint is a, a structure to structure jointing because you cannot do full concreting at one stage so when you have done concreting on one day and then you want to extend that concreting uh, ahead you will have that cold joint which will always behave differently and you can have 
see cracks there so that needs to be treated well before you uh, have done your waterproofing because you need to trace those areas gray areas where waterproofing leakages chances are the most and then there are some plant joints which are structural joints which are like expansion joint that we plan so that uh, your structure life is increased and your deflections are reduced so all these four gray areas need to be seen well before we start our waterproofing i know nobody thinks that deeply about waterproofing nobody will be considering waterproofing as such a vital subject before this class and there are a lot of myths you are not the only one who has did this there are a lot of myths on waterproofing that we have still in this 21st century that we call the most modern modern sort of a society so waterproofing is basically uh, mostly done in india here with sloping systems sloping systems are considered as waterproofing system when you have your say terrace slabs or your bathroom slabs there is a brick bed which is laid onto that top terrace which lets the water slope out and with which we consider that waterproofing is done we are not considered enough that yes concrete has one rule that it will crack right now or it will crack somewhere in future so when we are considered enough that yes there can be cracks later how can we consider a sloping system as a waterproofing system but then mostly more than 80% of the waterproofing which is done here in this country is done through this traditional system of sloping system wherein any water which is splashed onto the surface will flow out because of the slope and your drain pipes will carry out water outside but then what happens if there is aggressive rains if we are placed in an area which has higher rainfalls or if there is a few days rainfall that we have what happens in a bathroom which is which is showering every time there is a survey which says that any normal area will have 50 to 70 inches of what uh, what rainfall but your bathroom shower cabins has more than 1200 inches of waterfall so are what bathrooms not important for waterproofing because they are inside your structure they can make immense damage for complete year whereas terraces and all those areas which can have rainfalls can only put you into problems for few months so sloping system are no good as a waterproofing system because they cannot give you an extended life they are very difficult to remove after a span of its failure because they are very bulky they give a lot of dead load onto your structure there is a lot of load when we are actually uh, you know giving a big slope onto a terrace which is every 10 feet you will have 1 inch of uh, slope which will easily carry out water outside so uh, on, on the highest point we will be having 5 to 6 inches of that dead load which is actually not needed for your structure so we do this considering that yes waterproofing uh, we have done waterproofing but then that is a myth because there will be always cracks into your brick bed coba we always see cracks into brick bed coba over a period because brick bed coba does not have any flexible strength it does not have any steel rods which will let your uh, flexibility and uh, will not you know uh, result into cracks but then we always see crack on on a span of say 2 to 3 years and just because there will be thermal expansion contraction which will always be happening onto your cement uh, base surfaces and all those expansion contraction will result into cracks so when the cracks happen and when your brick bed saturate say if there is a rainfall for say a span of good 4 5 days your brick bed brick is an absorbent material so is not a waterproof material something which is absorbent cannot be waterproof we understand this right so if there is any penetration continuous penetration of water and if your brick has saturated 
it has saturated in a it will let water to your structure your slab your surface and if your slab or your structure has cracked which will happen at least at on a span of 3 to 4 years maximum and minimum 2 to 3 years the cracks will emerge which will not be a very big crack it will be a hairline crack but then that will start penetration of water inside 